On September the 11th of 2022, a strange and disturbing post appeared on Reddit titled simply, My Q Dad Snapped and Killed My Family This Morning. In the post, a woman detailed how her father, after falling down an internet rabbit hole, snapped and attacked her whole family. At first, you'd likely be skeptical reading a post like this, but unfortunately, it was real. It's the holiday season now, and that means we're all trying to save money wherever we can. Why not start with HelloFresh? HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout, so you can put those savings towards gifts, or, you know, maybe just something for yourself. Being such a busy season, maybe you're short on time. Check out HelloFresh's quick and easy options, like 20-minute meals and easy cleanup dishes. They're both big on flavor and easy on effort. These time-saving solutions mean that you have just that much more time to spend with friends and family around the holidays. Maybe you're going to be traveling throughout the holidays. Well, HelloFresh has plans that work with your schedule. Change your preferences, delivery day, and address in just a few clicks. For today's video, I decided to try out the sweet chili pork and cabbage stir-fry. This stuff ended up tasting exactly like something I might order from a restaurant. I've always tried to kind of get this flavor myself when cooking, but I've never really nailed it as much as I have with this recipe, and the best thing is, it only took about 20 minutes to make. Definitely recommend this one. In general, quality is HelloFresh's priority. Ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days, so you know they're fresh. Not to mention that, but you'll also cut down on time, and you'll cut down on your food waste as well by about 25% compared to grocery shopping. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code DIRETRIP18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Once again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code DIRETRIP18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. And now, on to the content. Every once in a while, we get a first-hand account of a really, truly horrible crime on Reddit. There have been a few that have been pretty widely circulated over the past couple of years. There have also been a lot of fakes. This case isn't one of those. Just a fair warning, this story is going to involve politics. It's kind of a focal point, so it's absolutely unavoidable, unfortunately. I really hate getting political on this channel, so I'm just going to purely explain it as a narrative and tell you what happened without any opinions being involved, except the opinions of the people I quote in the story. So, let's get into it. My cute dad snapped and killed my family this morning. Yep, the internet ruined him. Today's story revolves around a 53-year-old man named Igor Lannis, who was living in Walled Lake, which is a smaller community about 30 miles northwest of Detroit. Igor was a man with no particular history of violence, never had anything like a protective order placed against him. By all accounts, he was a normal dad. Better than that, he was a good dad. He had a wife named Tina Lannis, who was 56, a daughter named Rachel, 25, and another daughter named Rebecca, who was 21. Speaking of her mother and father, Rebecca said, Growing up, my parents were extremely loving and happy people. I always had a special bond with both my parents. Igor Lannis was working as an auto parts designer out in Detroit. He was a conservative man, which was the norm for both men in his workplace and in his hometown, but he was never really on the extreme side of things. He watched some Fox News and was pretty big into Trump, but that was about the extent of things, for the time being. His daughter, Rebecca, said, in 2016, he was more normal. I mean, he liked Trump, but he wasn't crazy. But then, 2020 came. Then, when Joe Biden won the election, everything fell apart for Igor, and eventually for his entire family as well. When Donald Trump said that the election was stolen, Igor believed him completely. This led him to the internet, where he started viewing more and more videos from other people who believed the same. Eventually, he was in deep. Now, the name of the group that Igor got into has become somewhat of a no-no word on YouTube. You can say the word Q on its own. You can say the word Anon on its own. But if you put both together, you're probably going to get flagged for something. So when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm just going to say Anon, and you're not stupid. You know what I'm talking about, so... Igor fell down the Anon rabbit hole head first, watching more and more videos, combing through more and more comment sections, joining group after group, and eating it all up. Before too long, he believed that, quote, the deep state stole the election and that there's a worldwide cabal out there to get conservatives. Anon started back in late 2017. This was when an anonymous user on 4chan, going by the name of Q Clearance Patriot, started posting online, saying that he was a high-level government worker with inside information relating to the deep state. The Q came from what he called his Q-level clearance when it came to this information. 
He claimed, among many things, that Donald Trump was going to round up and purge corrupt government officials in what he called the storm. He claimed that Hillary Clinton had been detained and was all set to be arrested. More and more predictions came and went without actually coming true, but nevertheless, the people who were already in too deep stuck around regardless. This led to all sorts of nationally televised incidents. We had the Pizzagate incident, we had the gay frogman claiming to be in contact with Q and getting into all sorts of shenanigans, we had church pastors introducing the Lord to their congregations, and finally we had the incident at the Capitol. And unfortunately, we had a number of murders as well. In 2021, a man out in California became obsessed with the movement and ended up killing both his two-year-old son and ten-month-old daughter after he claimed that the group had enlightened him. He said that his wife possessed serpent DNA and passed it on to his children, and that he had no choice but to get rid of them. This man was also very deep into the Anon rabbit hole. He said that the kids were going to grow into monsters, so he had to kill them, say the police. And yet another person, a woman out in Florida, killed a fellow Anon follower in 2020, believing that this person was actually working with the government to conspire against her in secrecy. By 2020, these conspiracy theories were all that Igor could talk about. They were all that he could really think about. His daughter, Rebecca, said that he did nothing but consume crazy ideas online, with many of these ideas being theories involving Trump and vaccines. He did his best to push them on the rest of his family as well, to their dismay. Not only did he push this stuff on his immediate family, but he was even sending video after video to his father-in-law, urging him to watch them, hoping he would join the movement. Nobody could talk him out of them, Rebecca said. Rebecca said that her father was never once physically violent before, but his behavior definitely went on a downward spiral after 2020. The family said that he was being treated for some mental health issues, but didn't really specify specifically what those issues were. The police actually deny that entirely, saying that there's no record of any treatment at all whatsoever. That part just kind of comes down to who you believe in the end. He became a different person after 2020 when Trump lost, Rebecca Lannis said. It kept getting worse, and he verbally snapped at us a few times. Nothing physical, though. He never got physical with anybody. Eventually, Fox News wasn't even right-leaning enough for Igor. He became enraged after they called the race in Arizona for Biden, saying that they were traitors. When Trump said that his supporters should stop watching the channel, he obeyed without question. He used to only watch Fox News, but then he started watching OAN and Newsmax. He thought Fox News was too lenient or not telling the truth. Igor started to be unable to participate in any conversation that didn't relate to his new beliefs somehow. They completely occupied his mind in the end. He started getting more and more agitated at things that most people would just find trivial. If you brought up cell phones, he would bring up conspiracies about 5G towers. If he talked about getting sick, he'd bring up something about vaccines. If he talked about electronics, you'd get a lecture about the dangers of electromagnetic fields. I, I think you get the point. We were religious. Q turned my dad away from our religion, but my sister and mom and I would always pray together, said Rebecca. When religion left his life, his online life filled the void. Online extremism. Anon. Right-wing extremism, she said. Rebecca started seeing red flags. At the very least, she was growing less and less comfortable around her father. She said, I kept getting warning signs from him, so I slowly started distancing myself. Sadly, my sister and mother were too loving to believe that he could actually lash out like this. Online, she started posting about his behavior, writing, He would spend all day and night reading stuff on his phone and laptop and would get really pissy over the smallest things. His carefree and fun persona was gone. He started talking about 5G and EMFs being bad and modern medicine being a sham. One night, Rebecca went over to a friend's house for a birthday party and crashed overnight. Little did she know, back at home, her life was about to change forever. It was very early in the morning, sometime before 4 a.m. Igor was arguing with his wife, Tina, and his daughter, Rachel. Things got extremely heated, much more than usual. To this day, it isn't known exactly what they were arguing about, but it is believed that the argument centered around his wife and daughter being fed up with his beliefs, because unlike any other time they argued about this, Tina and Rachel were prepared to get into the car and leave him at 3 in the morning. Tina and Rachel went for the front door and stepped out onto the porch, heading for the car. This was when Igor snapped. He pulled out his shotgun and began firing at their backs. Rebecca said, They were both going to leave. My mom was grabbing something in the house before they were leaving. 
As my sister was waiting in the porch, my dad shot her, my sister. Then he also shot my mom. This was when the police got a call at 4 a.m. from a woman in anguish stating that she had been shot by her father, Igor Lannis. Nearby officers then rushed to the scene. At first, they had traced the call to a neighbor's house. Once they arrived, they heard another gunshot come from the actual scene and hurried over. This was when Igor came out the front door, pulled out his Remington 870 shotgun, aimed it at the officers, and fired. He missed, first hitting a car that was behind one of the officers and then hitting a home behind the other. In response to this action, the Wald Lake officer and the Oakland County Sheriff pulled out their own weapons and fired back, killing him on the spot. Fortunately, Igor failed to hit either of the officers, but it seems that he had planned to do even more. He showed no signs of stopping there. In fact, he had his car keys in his hands, and it seemed that he was going for the car when the police showed up. Maybe he was simply planning to flee, maybe he was going to continue somewhere else. Uh, we don't really know. The police then noticed Rachel Lannis, doing her best to crawl out of the front door. They then helped her to safety, getting her to the hospital, gravely injured and in critical condition. She told them that her father had shot her and killed her mother just before. They found Tina Lannis dead in the home. They noted that she had been shot multiple times in the back, seeming as if she was shot while attempting to flee. Not only that, but he had even shot and killed the family dog, shooting her multiple times as well. Rachel had also been shot while attempting to run, being hit multiple times in her back and legs, leaving her no choice but to crawl to safety. The police then discovered that Igor had one more daughter who wasn't home at the time, Rebecca Lannis. They learned that she was staying at her friend's home after a birthday party. To put it in her own words, I guess it was pure dumb luck because I was sleeping over at a friend's that night. I could have also died. Rebecca first heard about this when her grandmother called her that morning, asking her if she was also in the hospital. She had no idea what she was talking about. That was when her grandmother informed her of everything that had happened that morning, that her father had snapped, that he had shot her mother, her sister, and her dog, and that her sister was the only survivor. Rebecca went on to go stay with her grandparents for the time being. She had no choice but to take this all in. She felt that this tragedy should be a warning for people to pay attention to their friends and family who are in the same predicament and may need some help. With that thought, she took to Reddit, specifically going into a group for those who had similarly lost loved ones to the Anon lifestyle. She then posted the story that would soon go viral. Yep, the internet ruined him. Growing up, my parents were extremely loving and happy people. I always had a special bond with both my parents. In 2020, after Trump lost, my dad started going down the Q rabbit hole. He kept reading conspiracy theories about the stolen election, Trump, vaccines, etc. He always said he wanted to keep us safe and healthy. It kept getting worse, and he verbally snapped at us a few times. Nothing physical, though. He never got physical with anybody. Well, at around 4 a.m. on September 11th, he had an argument with my mother, and he decided to take out guns and shoot her, my dog, and my sister. My mother succumbed to her wounds, and my sister is in the hospital right now. My dad also fired back at the cops, and they killed him. I'm shocked, and I don't even know what to say. Fuck you, Anon. I hope the FBI tightens its grip on you and that your lackeys rot in prison and hell for poisoning so many people. At first, people doubted the authenticity of the post. Understandable, as it is an unbelievable story given the horror of it all. But it wasn't long before news articles were dug up and the post was proven to be genuine. A moderator went on to pin a post, saying, We can confirm this is authentic. I'm sorry for your loss, OP. We all are. If there's anything we can do, don't hesitate. Reactions were quick to pour in, mainly an avalanche of support for Rebecca. Many of the people who were responding were actually ex-members of Anon themselves, including a user named Somewhere, who said, Do you have support? Are you with someone right now? I'm so sorry. I am here. Rebecca responded, I'm with my grandparents. We honestly can't even believe this actually happened. Another user, Agnes Perdita, posted, I really hope your sister comes through. I have no idea what to say other than that I am so, so sorry. I hope you get the support you need. To this, Rebecca replied, She's in stable condition, but there's a possibility she won't be able to move her legs again. Then a user, Possum Hicks, said, I'm so sorry this happened. I believe you. I've read articles about this. The news agencies are blaming mental health issues for what's happening with your dad. 
I hope as you come to terms dealing with this horrific tragedy that you will set the record straight about the Q influence. I hope you're not alone, and I'm so sorry. Existing position 5742 contributed, lost someone to Anon. They said he was mentally ill. He was a completely normal functioning guy next door until he got involved with Anon. It's a cult. They brainwashed him and he died believing he would be reincarnated. Anon killed him. Although she couldn't respond to everything that came in, Rebecca did read and appreciate the responses, at the time giving a blanket statement to all of them. I'm reading all of your comments and I really appreciate you all so much. Although she appreciated the sympathy, her main goal was to raise awareness about the dangerous internet rabbit hole that her father had fallen into. On this note, she said, I want the media to call out Q because this is all their fault. She was disappointed that, in many cases like this one, the media was reluctant to directly call out Anon for its influence behind the criminals. Like her father, many others had started out being perfectly kind, normal people before they were influenced. It's like he got possessed by a demon, she said. The police, meanwhile, were doing their own investigation into the motive behind the crime. They couldn't realistically go off of Rebecca's word and nothing else, so they took his cell phone and his electronics and started looking into it themselves. They were astounded that someone with no criminal record could commit something so heinous without any smaller steps of violence along the way. This was actually the first shooting in the history of the Wald Lake Police Department that involved an officer. It was huge. It was something that they weren't used to dealing with, needless to say. The neighbors were blown away by what had happened as well. They knew that Igor was a man who kept to himself, but he never seemed malicious. If anything, he was a bit quiet and weird, but not enough to raise eyebrows. One neighbor told news outlets, I saw him walking the dog a couple of times. I said hello to him a couple of days ago as I was doing yard work. Got no response from the guy, just had his head down. Rebecca went on to tell the news, I had a really close bond with my mom and I can't believe she's not here. I think that people need to focus more on radicalization, and on. If they have relatives with guns who are like this, you need to get them help, and they need to get checked into a mental institution, even if you think they're not dangerous. Eventually, Rachel's condition was changed from critical to stable after she went into emergency surgery. Although Rebecca can assume what her family was arguing about that morning, she isn't about to just ask her sister. I just don't want to know. I don't really want to know, she said. A man who studies Anon, Jack Bradich, who is an associate professor of journalism and media studies at Rutgers University School of Communication and Information, has said that the group can be particularly appealing to people who may cling to the beliefs, quote, as a way to cope with a changing world where they feel less comfortable. He added, Anon gave some people a sense of purpose and a narrative that almost assured a certain kind of future. This certain, planned, predictable future could provide a sense of comfort for people who feel uneasy about the future in the same way that religion helps a lot of others. They may act as if they're protecting a bunker and treating other people, even family, like an enemy, he said. Once again, thank you for watching my video. I acknowledge that this comment section is going to be a disaster, so I'm going to go run and hide somewhere. If you found the video interesting, please give it a like. It really helps me out in the algorithm. And if you want to see more like this, go ahead and subscribe. I talk about stuff like this all the time. If you don't mind, go ahead and follow me on social media. I mean, if anything would ever happen to the channel, that would probably be the only way you'd ever hear about it. And if you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I keep linked down in the description below. And speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We've got L, Rain Noir, L Palmieri, Pao Yang, Alice Malice Tentacles, April Diamond, Starfade, Astral, Grack, Angie, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Wafrans, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Marsh, Rinzenstein, Kim Peek, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Nane, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You are all like, uh cupcakes or something man i really need to find some new stuff to say I'm, I, I'm i'm out i'm i'm out but thank you once again go to hellofresh.com and use code diatrip18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping this has been your host kyle thank you and good night